Hey guys, it's Sam and this is my spoilery gush for The Winter of the Witch by Katherine Arden. As I said, this video will have spoilers in it, so if you have not read this book, go ahead and check out my spoiler-free review, which is linked on the screen. So I finally have my moment in which I can gush about this book fully because I wrote notes throughout the story as I had emotions about it. So this isn't going to be a really eloquent uh, video probably. It's just gonna be me going through my notes like in order of things that happened and screeching about them. Let's buckle in. This is a book that I was like nervous to read because I felt like it was going to be good. I didn't want to be disappointed but I also felt like this series doesn't have plot armor for its characters. Like bad things can happen to them and do happen to them and so I was always constantly nervous for Vasya and Morosko like constantly. More her than him because I'm like you like you're basically immortal. So you're fine. But like I was just constantly nervous for her and like horrible things happen. I just was like I need to read it. I need to know what happens but also I'm scared. So <laughs> you know that you really love a story when like you keep like putting it down and picking it back up because you're just like, I feel fear. Like I mentioned in my review, this is such a beautiful culmination of the entire story. It really wraps in all the stuff we learned about Vasya and her history with the like other world with like the spirits and, and the, the creatures and stuff. You know, we had to have that first book that was slower showing how much she respected and knew about all of this like magical side of the world. And then we had the second book where she gets pulled into like the real world, right? And this book is the combination of that and her as this person that can bring the two together. And you had to have the first two books to really see that. And it was so satisfying to have this book and to watch that happen and to see her evolution. Throughout most of the series, I've always been like angry, not at the series, but at things that she is put through because of like, damn it, like she, I don't want bad things to happen to her. But the fact that a lot of this book, she just was like fighting back against that and being like, I've been through hell and you can't do shit to me. And I'm like, yes, um, I just, there's so many things about this that I loved. So Vasya as this like third party in this war between the two brothers was the most beautiful thing because I just loved how the magical side of the world was like, oh, you're a third party and it's not like she's gonna side with either one of them. They're like, you could be a power within your own right. And I'm just like, it's what she deserves. I think I was mostly in denial about Solove dying at the beginning, even though like you had the prophecy from the first book about like she's gonna weep over a nightingale and you're like, oh god, he's gonna die. And then like, you know that he dies, but then it's like, is he really gonna die? I actually spoiled myself a bit for that because after that happened, I was like kind of traumatized. So I flipped through the book to see if his name got brought up again and it did later. So I was like, I think it's gonna be fine, but I don't know how it's gonna work out. And I just, I can't really think about that right now. The first scene where I really felt like, oh my god, we're going to get her being this incredible badass, even though she's been a badass the whole time, but like a lot of powers, outside powers have kept her down and now she's taking back a lot of like agency and power. The first scene when she was fighting the like lake spirit and it's like trying to kill her and saying it's gonna kill her and she's like, you will not kill me. I was like, I love you so much. Like that moment where she's like, you're not going to. Like, listen, I know you think you're going to, but you're not. And he's like, okay. <laughs> And then I was absolutely screeching when we have Baba Yaga and that she is like a descendant of Baba Yaga. I love the Baba Yaga myth. Like who doesn't want to just live in the woods on a house with chicken legs and be like the most powerful and feared thing in the forest? And I just found it really interesting that like through Midnight, which was a very cool thing, very cool concept, very cool like world traveling through Midnight. Awesome, love the imagery there. And that Baba Yaga is dead, but still alive in Midnight. Like what a cool, what a cool concept. And just the fact that also Baba Yaga was kind of like, okay, am I that myth or have I just been combined into like the myths of all of these witches throughout time and we're all Baba Yaga? Great. So I really love that she has a place to go back to. She has like a family home to go back to that that like hearth creature like recognized her as part of the line, as part as being an heir. You fill in a lot of these like family things. You see that she has this like, you know, great aunt who is the servant who helped her go through everything. Like you get a lot of the, the tie in of the family stuff. I know this happens later, but finding out that she is the descendant of not only Baba Yaga, but also like the sea king spirit. So not only is she f a forest witch, she's a sea witch. And those are my two favorite kinds of witches, man. So, and I just, 
mm, I loved everything about that. I was like, yes, that is, those are like my two favorite kinds of magic. So I was having a great time with all that. I really loved how she had to travel through midnight to find Morosco and that he was trapped not in a place where he was, you know, trapped in the same way that the bear was, but he was trapped almost like in his own complacency. And she's like, you've become forgetful. So when she goes there and he's just kind of like his, you know, younger self and is like, I don't, I don't care about you, whatever. <sighs> all of that was so good. The scene where she like brings him back to himself and it's all about like choice. Like she's not doing it like for him. And the whole time they're both kind of in denial that they love each other. And she's like, yeah, I'm not chasing after him just because of being in love with them. And she's not. She's like, you know, like you have a role to play and I need you. And like, we are equals in that way. So I loved that. Now here's a start of me talking about the quotes. So I will be talking about individual scenes and the quotes that I wrote down for this story. And the scene where she's like, never give me orders. And he's like, command me then. I shrieked. <laughs> like that is that kind of relationship, man. That's it. That's what I want. That's what I want in fantasy. That's what I want in real life. This is one of the times when there's a crossover there because a lot of times for me, I don't want the dynamic that the like ships have necessarily, but that whole like back and forth thing there, chef's kiss. Then when everything is good and they're like teamed up again and they do the whole exchange of you're not alone anymore and I know neither are you. And they kept repeating that throughout the story. Like they just kept saying to each other, like, you're not alone, you're not alone, you're not alone. And I'm like, partners, battle partners, battle couple, battle couple. They are equals, they are partners, they, and, and it's not, it's not that like codependent you are not alone. It's just like, I got your back. I got your back. It's so good. And people referring to her as the winter queen and her being like, no more lies. And he's like, yeah, they're equals. They are equals. I love them. Another moment I really loved was when they were leaving and she was like, I can't ride another horse because of her grief. He like walked with her out of the area, even though he could have been riding his horse. Another sign of equals. There's so many like symbolic, but like behavioral things that they do in here to show like we are equals now. We're not even just saying it like in our speech, in our actions, in feelings, in everything, we are equals. <sighs> It was a gift personally to me. So another thing that I really loved but wasn't expecting was the dynamic between the bear and the priest. I think there was like a little bit of that before, but this was like, oh, you guys kind of love each other and I am down. Is it a problematic situation? Yes, but I still loved it. Like as soon as the bear kisses him on the mouth, I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> like it's just, it was good. It was good. And I think so many of the bear's lines in here are so good. Like he has a line about there really not being any such thing as like truly good and evil. There's always a gray area and someone else's monster is another person's beloved. And like all those kinds of lines were just wonderful chef's kiss. He also has a line about faith. At one point the priest sees that one of the other priests, uh, Sergi, I think it was, was able to like banish some things and like use things through faith and whatever and Constantine thinks that like there is no God and he's been given up by God and whatever and the bear says something along the lines of there is no God there's just faith and the importance of belief throughout this story as being important like Vasya has to believe in her magic and basically like her, her term is like forget that this thing is not on fire forget that they can see me whatever and that whole like belief thing, making things real. I thought that was really interesting. It was kind of a way to have like, okay, so kind of both of these religions can exist. And it's not that those things are real or not. It's they're real based on the faith in them, which I thought was really cool. And then the scene, which I wasn't expecting because I didn't think that the priest was going to die. When the priest does sacrifice himself in order to bind the bear and he's dying and the bear says something like, you know, I always did keep the faith. I loved your hands. And he kind of like begs Morosko to like bring him back. And he's like, I knew you wouldn't, but I had to ask. And there's like lines throughout where like Vasya's like, did you care for him? And he's like, in my way. So good. And also one of the things that I wish there was art for. There's like a few art things for them, but I'm just like, it's so angsty and good, man. Not like a favorite OTP or anything, but is like so angsty and good. Not as angsty and good as like Morosco and Vasya, but like 
very good and something I was not expecting. And I was not expecting to like the bear in this story. Like obviously he's been this villain this whole time, but he became like I think more human through his interactions with people and he's still someone that can't be trusted and all of that, but I found him very funny. He has some really good lines and is much more human in this story and I really liked that and that balance that the story brings and that she has brought to this world. So I liked when she has to go and unleash the bear because again, not expecting that. And they have this whole conversation where she's like, the fight between you and your brother is over. You are both joining my war. So again, she's saying like, I am a player in this. I am not being pulled around by your guys' shit anymore. And the bear says something like, well, maybe you'll go mad because you're magic and then you'll be mine. And she's like, I might go mad, but then I will not be yours. I will still be myself. And she's like, and when I die, I will not be his, as in Morosco's. She's like, I will always be myself. And I'm like, girl, yes. And then when those things happen and she like brings the two worlds together and the magical world says lines like, you're Baba Yaga's heir in truth now. <sighs> so great. And I liked how they explored that she is also kind of between the two brothers as well. Like, she has some chaos in her, but she also has some calm. She never loses her humanity, but she does admit that she enjoys some of the chaos that she brings with setting the fires and, like, terrorizing, like, the Tartars and all of this. Being able to be both and exist on a spectrum and not be one or the other was so good. There's also a great line where she's like, I'm allowed to want things, Winter King, when they still haven't quite like figured out stuff. Like the fact that she was like, I as a woman can want things. <sighs> I love her. And when the battle is happening and they're like, oh, I don't know how things are gonna work out. And her brother dies, which again, not expecting because I thought, okay, he's gonna die. And then they're gonna bring him back because they have this whole thing where like with both brothers, you can bring someone back from the dead. And he's like, no, this is my choice. I don't want to, I don't want to come back. And like, I respect what you're doing, but for me, my belief system feels that that is like black magic or whatever, and I love you, but I don't want to be a part of it, and let me go, and I'm at peace going. Like, that was a beautiful scene. But after that happens, and you know, like, Morosco has still started to feel more humanity and feel sad for the people that die. And she turns to him, because at one point he had said, I'm only going to be at this battle for the dead, like, I'm not going to join you. Then she turns to him on the battlefield and says, only the dead, Morosco, and he replies, and the living, beloved, and like, joins her, and it's just like, she brings everyone together, she is the balance in the form. <laughs> so, so good. And then that is like the turning of the tide. And I really liked how this series did use actual historical events, but then tied in the magical world. And like that, you know, she brought the magical world to this battle. And like she is the person that has brought it together and brought balance and all of that. And then I love how they do use their powers to bring Solove back and she has her horse back and that is just like so beautiful and important and like she kept the little carving he kept the actual like little body and like they brought him back <laughs> I love it so much. And then just the ending was wonderful because it does just set up that like she is the balance, she is making it so like people can still have their faith but they can have both faiths and they can like take care of their like you know house spirits and things like that but also have this like you know molding of religion. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And I love how when they're talking and they're leaving her and Morosco she's like we can like forge one country in secret. She's like you know you have your realm and I have mine because now she has the lake house and things and she's like we can forge one country in secret of all these like magical beings and respect for them and I just love that and then just in one of the final lines that happens she asked what did we gain and he said a future which is just like he never really believed in that he was like you know I can't be with you and all the stuff and now they can but she also says like was it worth the death that happened the loss that happened though too you know so like it's just so good but you know that like <laughs> they have a future together and they have their like own realm and she's part of like the magic and like she's she's the balance like I love this whole like theme of her being like the balance the in between the one person that could do this and the power that she has and like all the scenes where she's like I have defied prophecy like I have faced way worse things than you could ever imagine I was almost burned all these things you can't mess with me, but also feels the effects of the trauma and the things that she's gone through that have been horrible. She is my favorite, I love her, and I love this finale. I'm sure there's way more things that I could say about it, but I want to talk about it with you guys in the comments as well. So comment them below and let me know your thoughts and gush with me and everything because this, I found literally no fault. You guys will probably point out something, but I like, I, I have no complaints about this story. This was perfect. Five out of five stars. Wonderful, beautiful, brilliant. Loved it so much. 
one of my favorites of the year. So like I said, comment down below, let me know your thoughts. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.